Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Ejar Zivanai Takeri Ejar Zivanai Takeri was born on the 1st of April 1937. He was one of the foremost freedom fighters and politicians in Zimbabwe who led the struggle against the white minority government in southern Rhodesia as Zimbabwe was then called. Ejar Zivanai Takeri was an early partner of Robert Mugabe and was a founding member of the Zimbabwe African National Union ZANU. He along with Mugabe was imprisoned for more than 11 years by the white minority government of Ian Smith because of their anti-government activities. If anything, it increased his resolve to fight against the government. Immediately after his release, he set out on foot, crossing the border and went to Mozambique and in 1975, he masterminded a guerrilla warfare against Ian Smith's forces with the help of President Samura Markel of Mozambique. His close family members and relatives back home were subject to constant harassment from government forces because of this. When Zimbabwe finally gained independence in 1980, Tekeri was elected the first Secretary General of the Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front (ZANU-PF). Edja Tekeri was a huge fan of the reggae legend Bob Marley and personally invited him to perform at Rufaro Stadium during Zimbabwe's independence celebration. Marley's songs were a source of inspiration and comfort for him and the soldiers under him while they fought the guerrilla warfare for independence. It was at the occasion of Zimbabwe's independence that Bob Marley did the song Zimbabwe, an unofficial Zimbabwean anthem. Marley was personally hosted by Tekere all through his stay in Zimbabwe and taken on tours by him. Tekere became Minister of Manpower Planning in Mugabe's government in 1980. He was known to sometimes act in very erratic or inconsistent manner. Shortly after his appointment, Tekere and his bodyguards went out looking for supporters of opposition politician Joshua Nkomo. Failing to find any, they entered a farm and they shot dead the white farm manager, Gerald Adams. He was subsequently tried in December 1980 and found guilty of murder, but it was said that he acted with the wrong conviction that state security was at risk. Based on the existing law at the time, this made him to not be held responsible for his actions. Today, with the present level of research on war veterans, it is now believed that Takeri suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, arising from his fighting days which led to his erratic behavior. He was relieved of his position as minister on the 11th of January 1981. He however retained his role in the party as the secretary general of ZANU. In April 1981, during a visit to Kenya, Kenyan security forces had him detained and prevented him from addressing some students after saying in a newspaper interview that he was proud of the killing of Gerald Adams. Tekere was always quick to criticize his party and the government for being viewed by many as a leader of a rival faction to Robert Mugabe. He was sacked from his position as Secretary General on the 9th of August and Mugabe took up that position. Tekere lent his support to Mugabe during the 1985 elections, but he was expelled from the party in October 1988 due to his consistent criticism of corruption within the party. When Mugabe began expressing his thoughts to make Zimbabwe a one-party state, saying Zimbabwe would be better governed that way, Tekere was quick to disagree, saying, a one-party state was never one of the principles of ZANU-PF and experience in Africa has shown that it brought the evils of nepotism, corruption and inefficiency. He contested against Robert Mugabe in the 1990 presidential race 
on the platform of the Zimbabwe Unity Movement. He got unprecedented support because he dared to oppose Mugabe. All indicators seemed to suggest Tekere was headed for an electoral victory, which prompted an alleged mass rigging of the result by the ruling party. Supporters of Zimbabwe Unity Movement were also targeted for violent confrontations, and five of their candidates for the House of Assembly were killed. At the end, Mugabe was declared winner of the presidential elections. Disappointed with the way things turned out in the elections, Tekere dropped out of sight for a while. In 2005, he resurfaced and tried to rejoin ZANU-PF and stand as a senatorial candidate, but he was refused. Later in 2008, at a rally on the 2nd of March, Tekere announced that he was endorsing Simba Makoni, who was an independent candidate, to run against Mugabe. He said he had appointed himself as the principal campaigner for Mugabe's downfall, but Mugabe still went ahead to win. Heja Tekere had been battling with prostate cancer as well as post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, which at the time was undiagnosed. It became clear he had PTSD relatively recently with research done on U.S. military veterans who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. He finally died on the 7th of June 2011 at the age of 74. Ejar Tekere was named a national hero unanimously by the ZANU-PF administration. What have we missed out of this biography of Tekere? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share, and subscribe to our channel.